guys, it's Sarah, and today is a very monumental day because I'm finally getting to interview one of my favorite authors, Marisha Pessel. Um, she actually has a book, Never World Wake, that comes out on June 5th, and I'm super excited about it, one of my most anticipated releases. Before we get into the other questions, do you want to tell us a little bit about Never World Wake? Absolutely, I would love to. It's so nice meeting you too. Um, Never World Wake is a claustrophobic thriller that concerns five former friends. They were the best of friends in high school and now they're a year out and they convene in a remote estate the summer after their freshman year of college. Um, most of their friendships have sort of dissolved. They all haven't talked to each other in a really long time. And this has to do mostly because the sixth member of their group, Jim, died very mysteriously this, their senior year. So in the course of this reunion, they're involved in a near-death experience. Their car um, goes down a ravine. They all survive. They return to the estate. A very mysterious man knocks on the door and announces they have entered the Neverworld Wake, which, to make a long story short, is a break in the space-time continuum. And in order to free themselves from this moment of being trapped in time, they must do two things. One, they must solve the mysterious death of their friend Jim, and they also must come to a unanimous decision as to um, the one person who is going to survive the Neverworld Wake and return to real life. Wow, I mean, that's more of the synopsis than even I knew. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm excited. I realized too, I was like smiling really widely like while you were talking. I was like, this is actually a dark book. I probably shouldn't be smiling well, yeah, so much. Well, if you're excited by murder <laughs> yeah, like I, me. I mean, no, I do. I, I love like true crime and stuff like that. How do your story ideas come to you? Because they're pretty intricate. It's really funny. I, I believe the writing and the creative process is like a muscle. And the more you do it, the more just ideas start coming to you. Um, I mean, I have a drawer full of ideas for novels that I'm just like waiting to get to. So um, this particular idea was definitely born, um, it started as a side project. I'm working on my next adult novel, which I hope to be finishing soon. Um, so this was something that I really wrote in my free time. And whenever I would come to a, a moment in my larger novel that I didn't know what was going to happen with the characters or plot, I would turn to Neverworld Wake. And um, that just had a velocity and um, to the writing and it, it just wrote itself very quickly in a way that I had never experienced before. But in terms of the germinating idea, it was definitely inspired by Agatha Christie, who's one of my favorite authors. So um, the idea of this like closed claustrophobic mystery where everyone is captive and have to solve something is, um, is part of the, my DNA as a writer. Yeah, it reminded me kind of like of like Clue, like I'm yeah, like, like, totally. like they're all stuck, stuck in a house. Which together. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, like we're saying, like it's pretty complex ideas, both in Night Film and and this book. Are you someone that outlines your novels, or do you write? as you go. I do. I'm, I'm a big planner and outliner. Okay, cool. um, but I do allow um, curiosity and I do allow within that outline to change, but I always know what the ending is. Um, I always have a setup of who the characters are and what they're hiding mm -hmm. and everyone's secrets. So I very much have a sense of that. Do you um, make like character profiles and stuff? I do, I do. <laughs> and I use a lot of visuals. Mm -hmm. um, I have like a, one of those moleskin notebooks and I like cut and paste a lot of stuff. So if I can't remember what, you know, color Jim's eyes were, I have like a visual and I'm like, okay, he has dark eyes, let's remember that. Um, but yeah, I, I like to plan. Um, and I do a lot of that planning of a novel like pen and paper. Because mm -hmm. there's something about um, just you know, the analog process of, you know, pen, paper, not a computer, so in that creative process that I really like. So what intrigues you to write books that delve so deeply, like, into kind of like a dark place in the psyche? <laughs> well, I think I am completely fascinated by um, the human experience. What we show, the, you know, the personas that we show to the world, even to our family members, and what is often going on underneath those surfaces. And as a writer, I like to find those dark and hidden corners. And so much of, um, I mean, a lot of people say every story has been written, every you know possible combination of notes has already really been put mm -hmm. forth into the world. And I like to find those dark corners that, um, that I can mine um, because there still are a lot of dark corners in the world. Okay, so I'm gonna take it back a little bit to Night Film because okay. that's one of my favorite books of all time. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah. It ended, pretty open-ended and so I was wondering like as the author do you have a definitive take on, or like explanation for what happened or is it open-ended for you as well? I definitely have a definitive take 
Will you ever tell us? <laughs> no, I will not because I would hate to ruin your reading experience. I mean, so much of, I think all of my books deal in some way um, at the intersection between reality and fantasy or um, what you believe that happened and then like a series of explanations. And it's really up to the reader to s decide. And it also is very revealing as to who you are as a person as to what you choose to believe. I mean, my husband, for example, is all about the rational explanation. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anytime I have a story or book that doesn't have the rational explanation, he just finds that <laughs> Frustrating. a little disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, on the other hand, this is giving away a little bit, but um, I believe in those things that we can explain. Yeah. And simply because something goes beyond human understanding mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not true. Yeah. Or that it yeah. doesn't happen. I love that about night film though because I think it gives different types of readers, maybe more logical readers, it gives them something and then like maybe yes. more whimsical readers that like fantasy yes. gives them something as well. I always recommend night film to people who, and if, if you guys haven't heard me recommend it, recommend it to people who don't even necessarily read thrillers normally because it's such a multi-layered story and the, the mixed media format is really cool. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah. And it's one of those books that makes you feel like you're reading it like on a roller coaster underwater. Oh, like it's like so like such an experience. It's it's so and good. you're half drowned. Huh? Yeah, like, like no, that. really. Yeah. And then like there's parts where like the characters are also kind of like half drowned. Right, right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Would you ever write a sequel for any of your books? It's interesting, of course. I mean, I think right now I'm definitely in the um, pioneering mode where I want to, um, you know, write all of these stories that I have in my head, you know, and it has to do with new worlds. Mm -hmm. And that's, someone asked me about why I don't want to write the screenplays for the film adaptations, and I'm like, you know, because I'm about the new worlds, the new stories I haven't been told yet. Um, so I'm certainly open-minded to revisiting my books. Um, as sequels, but for now, it's about like the new stories I have to tell. Can you tell us? Do you are you able to tell us a little bit about the adult book that you're currently writing? I'm not. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. What inspired you? to write a young adult novel after writing two adult novels. Yes, well, so I always knew that I wanted to write in the young adult space um, because books were so important to me as a teenager. Um, everything, I read everything I could get my hands on in that genre, whether it's, um, I mean, all of Agatha Christie. I guess that she's not technically young adult, yeah, but I yeah. read her as a teenager. Yeah. Um, the Outsiders, um, Chronicles of Narnia, you know, all of Judy Bloom. So I just love that tradition of literature, and I knew I wanted to contribute it in some way. And then I had the idea for this little, um, you know, mystery that um, just kind of came into my mind. And even though um, my agent and I didn't know that I was gonna go right to young adult after my second novel, but it just sort of came together really quickly mm -hmm. and, um, and we were excited about by the book. So we thought this is the perfect entree to this, um, this world. And um, I'm certainly gonna keep writing mm -hmm. um, in tandem with my adult books. Um, it's interesting though, um, your first novel actually is about a teenager, but it's technically classified as adult. I know. Like, what, what do you, Clearly, like, I was this always is always, trying to this write is about always a discussion. I mean, I read adult, I read middle grade, I, I read young. I, right. I don't really care about age brackets, but right. what do you think, like, separates um, special topics in calamity physics, such a mouthful, and um, Never World Wake as being one being marketed to teens and one not? I mean, I think more and more of those you know, guidelines are kind of becoming moot. Well, because special topics take place in a yeah. high school, it could technically be young adult. For a young adult, the only guideline that I was given is that your characters have to be teenagers. Right. Like, right. they can't be 20, right. they have to be 19. Yeah, but I have read books that are classified, like, all of Sarah J. Mass's books will be classified as young adult, but they have, like, sex scenes and stuff. So it's really, it's oh, really, really, really interesting, because oh, okay. the new adult and young adult like space is like kind right. of intermixed. So and um, I think Neverworld is. Someone said it was new adult because it's a college even, age. Right. Yeah, so it's oh, really okay. it's, it's such an interesting conversation. It's, it can be kind of touchy on Twitter yes. and stuff because people feel passionately about this. Right. But I really believe in the like yes maybe like middle grade for example those right. books are going to be written very specifically for young children to yes. read. But I think young adult, young adult and adult. Just yes. depending on who you are as a teenager, yes. like I think. And it's so like, many adults love to read young adult because there's something about the books that they move yeah. and they're really yeah. passionate and yeah. people are dealing with life or death situations. Yes, and, yes. Um, and they love that, like you know, narrative, like freight train moving yeah. forward. And I think Harry Potter even can kind of be like at some points middle grade, but we all love Harry Potter. Well, right, but I think actually she started out middle grade right. and then she became young yeah. adult. Yeah. By the time. What was the first book you ever wrote? Oh my gosh, this would definitely be unpublished. The first book I wrote, um, I think I was in fourth grade when I was writing like, you know, larger. I always wrote 
on my mom's like um, old Smith Corona typewriter. And I also was a huge equestrian as a kid. So I wrote this mystery and I was always writing mysteries. Like there were always dead bodies in my stories. I never wrote like, there was always a mystery. There was always like a thief in the night. Um, so it was about this, uh, these, this couple that were madly in love named Venus and Dylan. And they, and I would write like three pages worth of going to McDonald's and what they ordered. And they always got like a large fry and a hamburger with nothing on it, which just so happened to be how <laughs> I liked my hamburger. And um, I would take this mystery. And anyway, Venus's horses were stolen. And um, no one knew why. I'm not sure if one of the horses ended up dead. There might be that element too. And so it was <laughs> trying to figure out who stole Venus's horses. And I ended up taking these stories in to my friends and then sharing them in class. And then people really just loved this, like, you know, they loved the mystery. And I was like, Wow, I feel sort of popular. I do many kids. Oh, like all the kids in your class, like yeah. read your. All of a sudden, I was an invisible. Oh wow! Animal. You're I like, like okay, yeah, I can um, So yeah, it was definitely Venus and Dylan. My mom like still has these things. And oh, you should. Some, oh yeah. You should, you should like write a biography, autobiography or something, and include excerpts. I mean, they're hilarious. <laughs> it's really hilarious. Like my dialogue is all about like McDonald's because clearly that was my favorite. <laughs> you restaurant. were like into it. <laughs> I, I was like, oh, this is great. Um, did you have any jobs um, before you were an author? Yes, yes. Um, I mean, I had summer jobs starting in high school and then a uh, job in college. I was always, actually I did a lot of um, coffee making, like cappuccino, like barista type work. And then finally my first job out of college was as a financial consultant at PricewaterhouseCoopers. Oh, okay, I was that's a little different. <laughs> I was an English major and they had me, they would give me all of the data and I would put it into PowerPoint presentations and I would like, manufacture a story out of all this stuff that they gave me. And um, so I wrote my first novel, Special Topics, while I was a consultant at this Pricewaterhouse. That's so interesting. Yeah. I feel like whenever you find out what authors did before, it's always like so random. You're like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. It's like <laughs> anything to make a like, paycheck. Um, but yeah, I wrote a lot of that book like at work. And I would have like my novel open and then the spreadsheets open in front of it. And I would like be clicking back and forth. I was a complete con artist. And it was good that I eventually was like, I, I can't do this anymore. Was Special Topics the first book that you tried to like query or like publish? No, I mean, I had the dream to be a published author really early, like in high school. So I would write these long books, um, always send out query letters. And my first person that I would always query was Amanda Urban, um, who was, I remember Googling like maybe in the, Oh, no, actually, maybe this is before Google. I must have like found out on like in a book that she was like the top agent. So I would always start with her, always get universally rejected, and then I would work my way down. And um, and now I re I'm represented by her. So oh wow, that's so very, great. It was like full circle. Did you keep your rejection letters? I know authors do that sometimes. I think I must have them somewhere. I mean, this this is all like you know going. I think I'm sure my mom has. <laughs> Your mom keeps um, a lot of things for you. Know, she does. She's got like a little memory. If you ever came to my house, she'd be like, she like, a, like a shadow box with all your stuff in it. <laughs> yeah, shadow box. Yeah, exactly. More like a basement where there's like you know cobwebs and spiders. <laughs> would and be, which would be on brand. Yes, exactly. It'd have <laughs> yeah. to be in the basement. Um, but yeah, I, I wonder. I know I should find some. But you know, some of these. I mean, the wonderful thing about publishing is mm -hmm. that they're always looking for a brand new voice. And they're looking for you. They're looking for some, you know, a brand new story that mm -hmm. hasn't been published before and something very original. So I just had that in my head, like if I just kept working as hard as I could, um, you know, hours in front of the computer. This was not like an overnight success. It was a lot of Friday nights where like my friends were out having fun and I was like alone in the apartment just like with my book. Um, so I knew, I hoped eventually that would pay off. Well, that was inspirational for any of you aspiring yes, authors. I hope so. <laughs> Is there any other job that you would maybe do in your lifetime or like another dream job that you would do besides being an author? Yes, I mean, I would love to be a detective. I would love to go back and solve some of these unsolved mysteries and mm. like open the case files, like starting with the Black Dahlia. Oh, wow, yeah, that's yeah. And like, let's figure these things out. Um, I hate the idea that the truth is lost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I would be a detective. Yeah. And then I also would like to be a prosecutor, like putting some of these people in jail. Um, but I, I think I would find it too stressful. <laughs> that, no, that sounds too yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, I get this is a dark question, but I feel like people who like true crime would know this. Do you ever do you have like a favorite case or any sort of like conspiracy theory that's your favorite? It's called the Hinterflack Murders, um, where a series of strange things turned up 
Now, I can't remember the year in which they happened, but um, to make a long story short, the entire family was found in a barn. No, I have heard about this. Yeah. Yeah. BuzzFeed Unsolved in an episode. Wait, wait they wasn't it? They okay. solved it? Wait, no, they they, no, no, they didn't solve it. Oh, it's, okay. called, it's called BuzzFeed Unsolved oh, for um, a reason. Saying, BuzzFeed <laughs> solved this in an episode. I was like, no, 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 BuzzFeed Unsolved. Well, BuzzFeed is very powerful. Maybe they did solve it. Maybe they did. <laughs> They're very powerful yes, millennials. I'm sure BuzzFeed, yes, because it happened in Germany. And yes, it's like yes. the, It's like their yes. black dahlia. And it's so creepy. There wasn't it's so creepy yes. because people reported, first of all, there's like a, a layer of incest. Like there was yeah. some incest going on in the family. Which okay, well, this like, is deeper than BuzzFeed went, but I'll link that down below if you guys want to watch the BuzzFeed episode. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I got to see this myself. Um, but there were also a series of strange um, reportings at the house that almost felt like sci-fi, like there was another force there. You should, tell, you should write like um, a retelling of it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, that is, it is good. Yeah. I, I yeah. remember it now that you were saying it. I just yeah. don't remember the last name of because it's like German. I didn't, yes. I didn't remember. Yes, it's all very German. I think that might be all of my questions. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, I feel like we touched on a lot of really cool stuff. So Let me know down below if you guys are excited about Neverworld Wake. I definitely recommend it. It's literally one of my most anticipated books of the year. Oh, I'm super so excited. Much. And if you haven't read Night Poem, you need to do that because it's amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I always say too, it's a nice foray. Like if you are read young adult and you haven't read adult, it's it's complex but it's like it, it'll like elevate it like helps you like get into that oh, good. that space and so it's exciting oh thank um, you yeah thank you so much. this was wonderful thank, uh, you for my thank you so much for being on my channel um and thank all of you guys for watching you're all beautiful have a nice day thank you